Unicorn Overlord, developed by Vanillaware and published by Atlas, is a strategy role-playing game with a splash of a real-time strategy that features a unique combat system unlike any others. But should it be your next to play games? And what is its stat? Let me tell you what you need to know in under 10 minutes. Unicorn Overlord starts with the Kingdom of Corniers under attacks by Gerelius, the general turns rebels and his forces. Queen Elenia, in the top spot, gives her son, Prince Elaine, to Joseph, her most trusted retainer. Joseph, though unsure at first, agrees to protect Alans and they escape the battleground. Queen Elenius and her other retainer then make a brave move to fight Galelius head on. They push through the enemies and get to Galelius, but just when things get really intense, the screen faded to black. Following the time skip, we learn that Connie and the surrounding kingdoms have fallen under Galelius' powers. On a far off island called Palavir, Prince Elaine, who's grown up now, decides time to fight back. He and his group of friends then set out to liberate their home from Guerrillas and the Senora Empire. On the first glance, Unicorn Overlord might seem like a typical high fantasy game, with the classic elements like elf, dragons, and magic. However, its real magic lies in the storytelling and world building. Unlike other stories, here, every character matters. A big challenge for any game developer is making each character's story interesting and meaningful, especially when it's come to a strategy role-playing games, which usually feature massive number of unique characters. Many games add social features and unlockable cutscene as a way for the developer to tell their story without having to incorporate it into the main plot, but this often than not can feel false or shallow. However, Unicorn Overlord stands out because its interactions, known as report conversation, are deep and reveal more about each character's background, personality, and belief. Additionally, the game does an excellent job of weaving connections between characters. More than often, a character you recruit early on will have some sort of connection with a character you'll meet later. A moment, your highness. Word has crossed my ear of a challenge issued by a woman named Berenice. You know of her? I do, in truth. Clive, Clive, Clive. Didn't anyone ever teach you it's not nice to go spilling other people's secrets? Furthermore, when the new characters is introduced, they often arrive in groups, usually with central characters and a couple of their friends. In many games, these sidekicks fade away after their initial meetings, but not in Unicorn Overlord. Here, many side characters continue to be part of the story as it progresses. Princess, wait! Making a martyr of yourself won't bring them back. <sighs> You're here to stop me too then. Finally, as an addition to the report system, the game does support a romance feature with those whom you have a max relationship with. I'd like you to have the ring of the maiden. Huh? What is it? If you're asking me that, then... Does that mean I get to be with you... forever? On top of that, I also like to add here that, in Unicorn Overlord, you are able to romance both male and female characters, and even other races that inhibit the lands if you are adventurous. Unicorn Overlord takes combat to an engaging level with a system that nods to the classic strategy games. It features the familiar rock-paper system mechanic, for example, cavalry beat infantry, infantry beats flyers, and flyer beat cavalry. But the game adds depth with type like armor, magic, and high evasion units. For instance, an armor infantry might resist a cavalry attack, and you will need a mage to defeat them. The character's customization in this game is excellent, as items do not only provide stats, but also grant abilities. One way to take advantage of this is to use item to cover character's weaknesses. A character who is weak against cavalry, like Virginia, can become balanced by equipping a shield that negates cavalry attacks. The combats in Unicorn Overlord run automatically, similar to titles like Fire Emblems, but with a twist. Characters have skills and ability you can influence. By setting condition, you can dictate when the character uses certain abilities. Like having Virginia use an ability called Vertical Edge against flyers only if they are present, as it does more damage against them. Otherwise, use Ion Crusher that does additional damage against armored units. After you are done with the character customization, 
the next thing is to put them in the squad. Formation is key in combat. The game features a simple front and back row setup. However, strategic depth comes from placing units correctly and pairing them with others to further their strengths or cover their weaknesses. For example, a flyer, vulnerable to archers, can be protected by a unit that blocks arrow attacks. Finally, it is time to choose the leader of the squad. Each character has unique leadership abilities, affecting theirs and their allies' performance on the battlefields. From flyers navigating terrain effortlessly, to healer and Asher supporting other allies' squad from the distance. Once everything is all set up, you are now ready to drop them into battles. In this view, you can pause the game and decide the destination you want each squad to move to. When you are ready, you can unpause and everything is moving in real time. You can of course, pause to change where each squad is moving at any time. Each squad is labeled with the number of stamina points they have. Every time the battle is being conducted, it will cost stamina. When your squad runs out of stamina, they won't be able to move and are forced to race. But enough about that, and let's talk about the fun mechanics. On the top left of the screen, you can see an orange stone called Valor Point, which you can use to perform many few abilities available in the games. There are all sorts of abilities, such as doing an AoE damage, heal a group of allies, or even teleport to the location of choice. Furthermore, apart from basic facility, such as the fort, where you are able to hold a garrison to gain a stat advantage, there are many interesting nodes for you to occupy on the field, such as powerful ballista, all the way to the daily catapult. Apart from structures that deal damage, utility structures such as an altar can also summon rain to recover your ally's health. The world map in Unicorn Overlord features the familiar experience of the classic JRPG with a splash of an open world like mechanic where the player can explore a large section of the map before choosing to continue with the main story. As you free towns under the Sinoiron's Empire control, you also unlock facilities such as the armory and taverns for you to use. Furthermore, the world map is filled with many interactable locations and NPCs such as black markets, a cemetery, and mining location, adding layers and rewarding those who enjoy exploration. This is another aspect where the game cleverly integrates the character's stories into the exploration process, as certain action or interaction requires specific characters in your party, making each character's role extend beyond combat. This design choice ensures character remain relevant throughout the game, embedding them into the narrative and exploration in a way that enrich the story and your connection to your party. Available on PlayStation, Switch, and the Xbox series, Unicorn Overlord offers a beautiful 2D high-resolution sprite, a signature trait you can expect from a developer, VanillaWare. Pairing with it, the animation and presentation are also one of the best when it comes to a 2D games. For the difficulties, Unicorn Overlord strikes a perfect balance. It's challenging enough to keep JRPG fans engaged, yet it's forgiving enough on normal difficulty, allowing some room for mistake for players who want a smooth story progression. Even though Unicorn Overlord offers complex mechanics and deep customization that might overwhelm casual players, you can still make progress using the default character setups. This means you don't need to deep dive into customization unless you want to. For players who love customizing and fine tune their team abilities, I suggest choosing a higher difficulty level as it will be more satisfying and provide the intricate challenge you are looking for. You can expect around 50 to 60 hours of engaging gameplay for a leisurely playthrough. And while Unicorn Overlord doesn't feature a new game plus mode, it introduces a new difficulty with a permadeath option for players looking for tougher experience on subsequent playthroughs. Furthermore, there is a post-game content that extends the game with additional quests and characters to recruit, though most of the game's offerings are accessible before the main story concludes, leaving limited activities for the post-game phase. In conclusion, I say Unicorn Overlord is a must-buy for anyone looking for strategy role-playing games that offer a deep customization with an above-average storytelling. It is definitely a dark unicorn that came out of nowhere and solidified itself as one of the best in its genre. And if you enjoy JRPG content, 
Feel free to subscribe for more on this channel or follow my live stream channel for JRPG playthrough and fraud. The link will be in the video description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.